early next morning we woke to find ourselves in the legendary city of Venice. And as you can see, we were not the only ones. The best time to visit is when there are no cruise ships in port. But when on a cruise ship, it's difficult to do that. Taking a trip around the backside of Venice, past Giudecca, because today the Grand Canal is closed for a regatta. It's great to be back. And looking forward to showing Venice to Rachel and having Edward and my sister Sharon with us. I was looking forward to going down the Grand Canal again, but plan B may be better. We'll jump on a ferry and visit the island of Murano, about an hour away by boat, and see the Vogelonga. My last trip here was in 2013, when I came here with my son Nate and made the film Visions of Venice definitely one of my favorite creations and with 350,000 views you might want to take a look so as we come up to San Marco Square it brings back memories quick stop here on the way to Murano passing the Campanile the Doge's Palace and San Marco Square as crowded as ever First stop, the Lido. The good news is that the sun has emerged. Sharon and Edward enjoying it. For Rachel, this is her first time here. And I know she was really looking forward to it. We had FaceTimed with her on the last trip from the Grand Canal at night. And now she's here. With the arrival of the sun, the boat ride became a very pleasant experience. And we're having a great time, enjoying the views and the chat. As we approach Murano, it appears every boat on the island is afloat. Time to explore, get some pictures, and see the sights. It's a fascinating place, a tiny version of Venice. But surprise, surprise, today is the mighty Vogelonga Regatta and the place has come to life. During the regattas here it seems everybody who has a boat joins in and there's a great diversity of craft filling the canal. Everybody enjoying the occasion. So what's the Vogelonga? It began in 1974 initiated by a group of Venetian oarsmen. It's a 30-kilometer, non-competitive rowing marathon that is open to all participants. The course runs through some of the most famous locations and canals in Venice, including the Grand Canal and even Burano and Murano. Anyone can take part with all kinds of rowing boats participating, even dragon boats from China. 
and it's regarded as a time of celebration in the historical spirit of Venice. It's not just a sporting event, it's a carnival procession thoroughly enjoyed by both participants and spectators. Yeah. It's naturally a great spectacle with teams arriving from all over the world. The participants' national flags fluttering on the bridge. I'd been disappointed that the Grand Canal was close to traffic, but when I see why, wow, this is really spectacular. It's not a competition. They aren't racing. They're participating, celebrating the art of rowing, which opens the way for anybody and everybody to join in the fun. And I can tell you, there really was a great spirit here among everybody. Where else can you see Germans in kilts steering dragon boats? And there's a naked dog riding a boat. It was a remarkable experience. Fantastic Venice. Now for a look around fantastic Murano. Quiet Venetian Campiello. Al fresco dining. The renowned glass of this place. Artistic creations that blow the glass and blow the mind. The canals, bridges, churches, campaniles. Even the shop windows fascinate the shoppers. And not a car in sight. Restaurants with exquisite views and food and medieval streets unchanged for centuries and for me a delightful nostalgic stroll through time and memories. A wonderland that is the real thing not contrived just here. and restaurants that offer the most sought-after delicacies. You guessed, it's right next to the fish market. What a visit it has been. And it's not finished yet. We still have four hours left. So we continue the boat ride. We're heading back to Venice, taking in the sights. The iconic Campaniles or clock towers.
passing Judeca on one side, St. Mark's Square on the other, the heart of Venice. On a day like today, thousands of boats. Just to sit and watch the world go by here is great. Certainly neither the weather nor the Vogelunga had disappointed. At times it seemed like it was frantic Venice. At times we could hardly see the canal for boats. But now for my favorite walk in all the world. San Marco Square to the railway station where we'll ride the shuttle train back to the ship. We had really enjoyed Venice so far, but it was about to get better. It's difficult to find a more iconic, emotive place than the canals of Venice, the gondolas, the boats, the history. My plan today is to retrace my steps when I came here in 2013 with Nate, when we walked through some of the less trodden routes. Though in Venice, all routes are well trodden. Our starting point has to be the San Marco Square. The beautiful Doge's Palace. The historic canals that have been here for centuries. The renowned Bridge of Sighs where condemned prisoners viewed the world for the last time. The waterfront in San Marco unique. There are seven cruise ships in today, so as you can see, it's uh, pretty hectic. Wherever one turns here, there's beauty and history. And crowds. And Rachel and amazing architecture. But then there's the narrow streets and the narrow canals. And I'm suddenly reminded that in Venice there are not only no cars, there's no place for them. So this is a special walk through history. I love boats and I love bridges. On this trip I even filmed the cruise ship going under a bridge. The bridges of Venice deserve a film on their own. Now Rachel is a prolific shopper. When she went window shopping, she came back with two windows. So progress is slow through these parts. Add the proliferation of street cafes, 
and my desire to shoot everything in sight. And I'm worried the four hours we have to travel about a mile back to the ship is not going to be enough. This is iconic Venice. The canal, the bridge, the gondola, the submerged doorway, the balconies, the ornate windows, it's all here. And we're soon arriving at the most iconic bridge of all, the Ponte do Rialto. Now Rachel really feels she's in Venice. And in my desire to allow others to vicariously experience what I experience on my trips, I'm rewarded as I vicariously experience what she's feeling. This is Venice unfolding before our eyes. A wow moment. So over the Rialto Bridge we go to my favorite part of Venice and begin the stroll over to the railway station, checking out the shops and stalls. Every now and then, confronted by quiet places. For Venice, this is off the beaten track, away from the madding crowd. The quiet campos, the quiet canals. Really, a delightful look at the quiet side of Venice that is nonetheless nostalgic and historic. The pretty Campo dei Tolentini, the Rio Novo, we're almost there. It's been a memorable stroll and we await the train to whisk us back to the boat because we're not finished yet. We're about to have one of the greatest experiences in all travel, sailing out of Venice past San Marco. As soon as we get back on board the ship, people are getting ready to sail away. We're about to sail out of Venice down the Grand Canal. It's considered one of the best sail away cities in the world, but already plans are afoot to ban all ships from docking in and leaving past the city center from 2021. I for one welcome any plan that reduces pollution, though one wonders why Venice's raw sewage problem is taking so long. In the meantime, we all enjoy the sail away while we can. Ships can be from 10 to 20 stories high, so the views are spectacular. Captain and crew keeping an eye on things. It's 
It's a beautiful evening, and already I sense the sail away will be great. But we're not the only ship leaving. Everybody is shooting their pictures, and no wonder. The Judeca Canal that we sail through has the main city on the left and the long island of Judeca on the right. It's a busy channel. All kinds of vessels plying the route. Even vehicular ferries. Smaller cruise ships get to dock at the port of Venice, closer to the city. Of the problems associated with Venice, one can but love the place. Even from this viewpoint, it's magical. A fantastic walk here is to stroll along the promenade that runs on both sides of the Judeca Canal. Nate and I walked down the opposite bank on my last visit, and I would love to walk down this bank with its medieval buildings, churches, and cafes. Great place for a coffee. Every now and then we get a glimpse into the city. One has no option but to soak in history here. And as we stand and observe, it's a memorable way to sail away. The problem being on a cruise is that each city visit is limited to about 10 hours or so. We only get a glimpse. Venice, its temples and palaces, did seem like fabrics of enchantment, piled to heaven. So wrote Shelley after his visit. I can see why he wrote it. San Marco, resplendent as the sun sets.
The Doge's palace reminding us that in the days when kings and even popes ruled Europe, Venice managed to rule itself. It's certainly a magnificent building. The crowds still thronging the square. The Church of St. George, on its own small island opposite, catching the evening sun. Judeca, the long thorn stretching off into the distance, quietly inviting the visitor, come and see me sometime. The Grand Canal also welcoming as the sun slowly retires. Everywhere are bridges buildings, boats, and bastions. But as they all bathe in the evening sun, it's like a serene peace lights the city. People appear to be walking a little slower, taking in the moment. Personally, as I look back on the day and all that we've seen and experienced, I consider Father Time walk slowly for us today. That must be him there. I'd like to introduce you to Mickey Mouse. This is the green part of town, the part few visitors ever reach. If I lived here, this is where I'd want to live. Having said that, I get the feeling that at times like this, I doth speak an infinite deal of nothing. I'm thankful that I don't have to please you with my soliloquy. I'm talking to myself as usual, out loud of course, but I've enjoyed the day and still enjoying it as the golden city fades from sight. In a moment, we'll all have dinner and share stories about our days. Pilot's work done, the ship says thanks.
and it's been another great day. Next stop, Rijeka in Croatia.